And so it's our, my pleasure to be here together with you to share some of our uh, experience and uh, our historical journey. Um, as you know that Tico Vietnam, um, or Tico Group, we are the Swiss uh, leading company on the EMS industry, electronic manufacturing service. So we have uh, worldwide uh, 2,600 uh, degree and almost 15 locations for us and they are very competitive to compare to Portugal TV or another uh, city in Asia. So it's the second thing that will blow up the kingdom here. Um, and within only in uh, 22 days, so that is uh, quite impressive because we cannot be able to do it in Germany with the speed like that. But uh, I think I can move in detail or which I will detail if uh, we have time. Okay, thank you. Then I want to move to Dr. Long. You are the one to start a smart city project in the first beginning and uh, you must be very proud of your own baby has been such a success now. So can you talk more about how you started and what you have achieved so far? Firstly, to be clear that uh, I, I got the permission of the leaders of the province to be here today to share some of our experience we have. But I'm here to share more of my own opinion. It's not a representative of the main problems. I'm just sharing my assignments. And I'm, uh, I have a chance to follow the project uh, since uh, seven years ago, eight years ago, uh, with people from IPOM. Uh, Peter Lee is one of the uh, key person and under the uh, direction of the new leaders and also become X. Support and uh, we join RCF through Ironman, uh, and also we uh, we are very close with our partner from Taiwan, and also with many other companies inside Pekamex. So many other universities join the project, and then we are happy to get uh, the most uh, prominent uh, award from RCF. So, uh, it's a short uh, contribution, and maybe after we have time, I can discuss more. Okay, thank you, Dr. Long. And Peter, you mm -hmm. just got awarded on the stage. So, you are the one that brings you down to ICF, and you have the accomplishment to build up this smart city till now. So, can you introduce well and Hoffman, the Enkhofen International Project Office? Well, first of all, and also my congratulations to everybody in this room who also part of the team that eventually made this success happen. So it's not always a few people, it's many people. I was in this room many times for operations committee meetings, meeting with all the directors and other partners of the OC steering committee. So I think that's the first. Second is that. Um, when uh, Min Jung received the award last month, it was the second time for me because I was in the United States in 2011 when Eindhoven was awarded the same award. So I know from the past that uh, any award will always give help you to, be, to become and build pride in the society and also pride in the, in the international community. The next day after Eindhoven was awarded, the New York Times wrote an article and they said, Will this be the next Silicon Valley? And obviously, I know we know, we know we are not the next Silicon Valley, but it gave us a lot of attention and it helped us to spread our message on the way we were developing Eindhoven in these days. And it was like eight years ago that a delegation from Min Jung visited Eindhoven and got inspired by a small city because Eindhoven, the hometown of Philips and the ASML, is still a small city. And we always say if you are small, you have to be smart in the way you, you work and the way you develop. So we learned the hard way because I know it was also going through economic bad times in the late 90s, how we could work together in a better way. And as mentioned already, we learned how working together between government, academia and also the mid private business could improve and help us to enhance the development of our region. And I think that was one of the ideas that really inspired the new leadership, visionary leadership, I might say, because it needs visionary people to 
uh, adapt and to allow reference and experience from other countries to be deployed in your own problems. And then that day, I think that was the, the, that laid the foundation for the success that we are discussing and also celebrating today. Thank you. So I totally agree with you that it always takes a village to make things happen, not just a few people. So my next is John. I was about to ask you to introduce about ICF, but since this is already your third panel in the morning, so I think more people should know more about ICF. But how about talk more about how ICF support being known to be the intelligent community this year? First of all, let me say that uh, I was thrilled to be able to be on this panel because this panel, even though I've only visited um, Vietnam and could have been known, uh, since September, and so on my second trip, I feel like uh, I know people here like family. You know, it's, it's wonderful. I feel very welcome. And uh, this panel is a, a lot of friends. I met this gentleman just in September. We've known Maggie from my time on for years. Peter, of course, and, and Wong, we've known him for many, many years. So this is part of what ICF is about. It's about family, it's about being uh, close to people and developing relationships. And I think it's it's endemic what's happening on this stage here. We are like friends, not just colleagues. I think that's an important part of relationship building, which is a key fundamental of economic development, but also of community development uh, as we move forward. Uh, so what does ICF do and how did ICF relate to Vietnam? Well, you have to self-actualize this. We don't go and search out this in the communities. They have to come to us and let us know that these are things happening around the world. And what we've learned uh, through people like Wong coming to uh, our conferences and learning from best practices, we've learned about Vietnam and Encourage them to make an application. After they made the application, we investigated further. And I have to say, after many years of investigation, you earned this. We didn't just give it to you, you earned this. I think that's a key that uh, a community comes from the people who are here, the decisions that you've made, the strategies that you've developed. People you reach out to, like I go and I go with me with Peter and the uh, and then the kinds of things that you do to make the decisions through your leadership to be able to create the best that you can in creating a quality of life for your citizens and for your community moving forward. I have to congratulate you. I think that uh, Vendong is a wonderful best practice that we are now going to tell the rest of the world. And you need to also do the same. You need to market, leverage what you've now been able to achieve, and let the world know that this is a place to come and invest in, live in, and help to create a better future. I really like what you mentioned and all the others mentioned because we all heard from him, Joe, that they got the support from ICF, they got the support from, and hopefully they got the support from Taiwan and all the country. But you just mentioned they earned it because they themselves, they also do a lot of the effort to make it happen. So I really like this idea. And yeah, you deserve it, Joe. So my next question for, for John that why intelligent community? Why you not just use smart cities, so you choose intelligent communities? What are the differences? So everybody's heard of smart cities. In fact, in some parts of the world, they don't want to hear the word smart cities anymore. Uh, the, the idea of smart cities is all about technology. And you look at uh, connections through broadband, you look at uh, developing measurement of data, in for decision making in order to create a convenient, uh, more efficient city that people are part of. But that's not all. You should use that as just the foundation of creating a quality of life. So we don't use the term smart cities, we use the term intelligent communities because we want to differentiate between the technology, which is really smart cities, and what we 
we refer to as intelligent communities where people are the focus. And that's why we suggest that after you have broadband and data that has then been analyzed and decision making, you take a look at how you can apply it so that people can create knowledge workers. The kind of talent that you have achieved here was universities like uh, Eastern International University and many others. Uh, that you develop entrepreneurship practices even in primary school and high schools. Uh, that you create training in the industries that you uh, have in this community so that you can bring it to another level. You mentioned earlier, once you have smart cities and smart people, now you can handle it. And you can create jobs as a result of that. And their prosperity needs to be shared with everyone in the community. So, we talk about inclusion, how to include everyone as part of that prosperity. Engagement and therefore we're talking about citizen participation in all those decisions. And then finally, we look for work. How do we take all of that and create sustainable, resilient, and revitalized communities we can forward? That's all the intelligent community work, not just the smart city. Yeah, very good. When I was in the ICS summit this October, there was a panel to talking about how the technology can help the people. So all the CIO are on the panel and they keep talking, it's not about the technology. It's not an issue for the technology, it's an issue for the people. So it's exactly just what you mentioned about that. So my next question will go to Peter. Peter, you just mentioned that and Hoffman was also one of the intelligent community in 2011. So you, you, mentioned you have a lot of experience that exactly the same with Spin Jung. So that's why you think you can inspire them. And uh, I think that's also the reason that you introduced the ICF accelerator strategy for them. So, but you know, Bin, you are from a European company and uh, Bin Jung is an uh, Asian company. So there must be some different issues. So can you talk about? Why do you think this uh, ICR acceleration strategy is still suitable for the Binjong and uh, what are the results? Mm. One of the important uh, <coughs> things about uh, ICF is that ICF uses a mechanism that you can use to measure yourself and to see where you are compared to other cities in the world. It's like a kind of self assessment to see where do we good and where do we have to improve. It's called the six indicators. So at the early days we used this to introduce the mechanism of also checking and balancing uh, what, how, how has been done so far and which areas do we have to improve. And I learned that every city in the world is open to see how we can do better for our people and also for our community and business. So that is a kind of universal uh, ambition that everywhere in the world people want to make progress. But the way you make progress has to be a smart way, which is adapted to the needs of modern times. That means if you think about urban development or about the master planning of a problem like with you, you have to think ahead about what are we doing today and where are we going tomorrow. What is the infrastructure we need today, but also how should we already look ahead 10 years from now, uh, what we can expect. As we all know, the resource, human resource and space are more and more getting scarce. So we have to be more selective, how do we use the scarce space we have and also how can we make best use and offer a perspective to all the people who work in the new one. These are the, the elements that are important today. But the other thing, um, my effort, my experience from my is that if you win an award, it's not the end of the game, it's mostly the start because Vinyung has not yet finished and we have not reached every goal. So we, I consider this kind of award as a good achievement for what we have done, but it is more pushing us to do better in the future. Because we all know here together that there are also in Benyu many challenges we have to cope with and that we have to improve. And also at the national level in Vietnam, we're doing good and the economy we can still do it reasonably good at the 5 to 6% GDP rate. And at the same time, we know that also Vietnam have challenges to see and to adapt to international geopolitical situations. So I think
think that is the ongoing change where we have to be adaptive. And that is one of the things we have discussed here in the room as well, that today we can no longer make plans for 10 or 20 years. The economic and the geopolitical circumstances are changing so fast that it is a, a big ability if we can adapt to that very fast. And that is one of my learnings that, especially with you, is open to learn and also open to be more flexible to make use of these changing conditions. Yeah, very good. Uh, I got two takeaways from what you just mentioned. The first one is, it is also the same with what I learned from a panel yesterday. We need to value the measurement not to major the value. So this is quite important. I think this is also like a job you always talk about. And you know, a lot of CT, they join the ICF uh, forum and they are already as the smart one and maybe they are already as the top seven. They may stop because they may think about, okay, that's enough for me. Smart 21 is not for me, top 7 is not for me. Even though they may be the top, top one, the intelligent the community, they stop going to join the event, but it is not correct. You still need to go because things change all the way, just as Peter mentioned that we need to go all the way so that we collect all the different things, so we can grow by ourselves. So my next question to Dr. Long, uh, Dr. Long we met in 2017. So since then, I learned from you that you introduced about the triple helix model. So can you talk more about this collaboration triple helix model and how it helped the development in the small city we in, in Joe? I would like to share that, you know, uh, in you get um, before uh, we have a very good uh, industrialization. And at that time, we know how to collaborate between government and enterprises. So it's already a dual, uh, dual helix. And then, but then now we move to the normal level. It's not uh, classical manufacturing anymore. We want to uh, bring knowledge, bring technology into the economy, social economy. Then we have to bring uh, the important uh, institution of that is uh, universities. So that is the reason why we uh, we bring uh, another partner into dual helix now become triple helix, and that is almost the only way to really transform our economy from uh, classical manufacturing to be a more knowledge economy, more of a high tech economy. So that is the way we are really uh, trying to to uh, apply this. We are very happy to learn that from Eindhoven. Of course, it's a theory from uh, the US, but uh, Eindhoven applies is very successful. And we, uh, we have very uh, nice um, uh, you know, ideas and many nice ideas and uh, application uh, experience from them. And then we also uh, join ICF, and we know that many cities in the world use exactly the same model. Of course, today people start to think about not only triple headings, it can be multiple headings or even more uh, multi headings. Uh, but of course, with our level now, we start with triple headings first. And uh, you know, whether we, we can uh, increase or upgrade our model. And uh, like today, you can see in uh, this room or even in the process, we, uh, of course, it's more about investment, about trading, but we also many people from science, from uh, technology, and uh, the Minister of Science and Technology uh, is here today. He's also one of uh, uh, nice improvement on uh, how can we, uh, how we um, focus on uh, technology and science to uh, really upgrade our economy uh, and social economy in a normal level. Yeah, you, you just mentioned a good example of how you earn this intelligent community because you are not just set up a model, you keep working on it to bring things into it to make it happen, to make it be better. So my next question will go to Ngun, that uh, um, smart manufacturing or industrial 4.0 is a very popular topic for now. And I trust your company has prepared for this way earlier than other companies. 
And I would like to invite you to share about this transition process and the this process. Do you face any challenges? And uh, you are in Pingzhou, okay. so does Pingzhou help in this area? Yeah, um, it's quite a really interesting question. So first of all, I would like to share our, our experience by Seagull Vietnam. So for sure, we are the electronic uh, contract manufacturing, so that means every cent count. So we have to uh, install the industry for quite several robotic, even the old kind of uh, lead management to make our factory smart, because we have almost four factories here in Vietnam, so we are the key uh, location in Asia to provide uh, almost a turnover of profit uh, back to the Cool. But another thing is, uh, we just work very really close with the local university, the Eastern International University, to attract the talent, the engineer, fresh engineer from the university because uh, they are very young, dynamic, and willing to learn. So uh, the thing is, if I uh, hire someone from Intel or from another Samsung or whatever in the IP area, so the rate is really high. It is they are not willing to uh, go back to the new, so we have to work with the local university. And not only the uh, Eastern International University, we work with Vietnam German University here in Bindu as well. So therefore, we have a, a pipeline, the pool of talents, which we can train here in Vietnam and make them commit for the next two years by Civil Vietnam and send them back to uh, Switzerland in one to uh, learn and adapt to the knowledge of the Swiss engineering move back to Vietnam, so that means we have very interesting competitive and mixed calculation of the engineer service. That's one thing. Another on the hand is uh, we have to create some innovation because uh, you know if we see in the same place, so we always move back. So I think we invest into the printing uh, electronics. So um, for example, on the normal plastic surface, uh, if you print the sensor or any or FID chips on it. So that's maybe the surface part, and that is uh, some kind of the, the rethinking of electronics. So you cannot do the uh, uh, chicken conduct uh, electronics like 40 years ago. And now we print the electronics on the, the foil. And the foil, you know, is just very cheap. So the, the thing is, you use printing machine, you can print 100 city meter per minute. So that's the reason why you can make uh, the electronics uh, cheap, whatever you want, it not depend on the location. And that's some kind of uh, technology or high tech you will like right, to transfer, bring back to the new. Because I think Bin Yub is uh, the most city uh, why we think that uh, the, the, the future uh, of the uh, smart factory or you know, smart production or smart uh, city or smart government and smart universities at the end of the day we have smart uh, communities that is that uh, young, young, Mr. Jung told us before so, um, but the most important thing is we got really strong support from local government in Bindu we got the personal support from Mr. Hung from Megamix we got the support from Mr. Dean uh, from, from, from marketing uh, department I feel like welcome, whatever we suppose or problem or challenging we have or facing, we just talk with them and we get self within 24 hours. So, quite impressive. So, I encourage the almost of German and Swiss uh, business community to uh, enter to, uh, to, to the new, uh, to participate on this uh, smart eco system which the new city already established here. You are really a good representative to you know, to uh, attract more com companies from coming in fast in Taiwan, Vietnam. Because uh, you mentioned a lot about the uh, workforce and uh, innovation. Because you know when we are talking about the uh, transformation, there are many factors that we need to consider. And uh, definitely, that the workforce and the innovation is very important either within the organization or the internal environment and uh, Bing Jong is thinking of the same thing that uh, they have created an innovation ecosystem for their partners here 
So and you just mention that I'm doing very well. So when you really have a problem, they are willing to solve this. So it's kind of that they are really providing a very good environment and very good program for the industrial need here. So can you talk more about this or can you give us some real example of cases that you experience this kind of uh, advantage so that uh, the other companies they may think about that they can come here and invest in Zoom to establish their, their company, their manufacturer, but what kind of support they can get from Big Zoom? So for example, you know, before when I uh, moved back to Vietnam to work uh, as a managing director of Chico Vietnam, um, the my former uh, MD uh, just named our Chico like Chico Anna. And the name Anna I don't like it because it's a few DP back in the year to the French colonial uh, town, a part. So that I don't want. So we would like to change it. From the point of view of our Chico group agree to do it. So, but how we can align with the local government? How we can change it quickly? But because you know another country like Indonesia, you're not able to do it. Yeah, or in Malaysia, so we have a problem with that. So, uh, but within, I think, three months, we uh, we finished with uh, the renal now from Sito Annam back to Sito Vietnam. And just make me happy and our employee as well, because we are proud uh, to work for Sito Vietnam, not for Annam, uh, for the, we have some of history uh, uh, background, which I don't want to uh, mention here. Um, but uh, the most of people know is about it, as it's the first positive thing. Second thing that I'm really impressed you know, uh, we bought the four factory. Uh, so we have the uh, three factory already, and uh, uh, the next one, uh, 7,000 square meters. The uh, acquisition process is still very quick. The permission is uh, really quick. Uh, so at the end of the day, we are able to, uh, to have the opening ceremony in this year. Even we just jump into the March uh, 2023 <laughs> in June, we can uh, make the opening ceremony. So that is quite impressive. So our staff need only 24 days to relocate the whole entire of SMT equipment, all the entire of high tech equipment, smart cars, everything, etc., back to, uh, uh, to, to, to the new location. And in the meantime, to build up the clean room, the two clean room, uh, 20 days. So for sure, I am think in Germany, we're not able to do it. So now I've lived more than 35 years in Germany. I never saw or see any uh, project which uh, moved really quickly like that. We work uh, from Monday to Sunday, and the uh, local government supports us with the permission. So I get the permission really quick. So that is uh, the two major positive experience we they have in the new. But nevertheless, so besides the positive experience, something I would like to suggest that the city even new to have some of like uh, uh, German high school somehow, uh, so that my children can uh, can stay here and go to school here and I can uh, with uh, me to live in the, the, the district too in the Mojibun the, the city. Uh, so otherwise I can save almost one hour back and forward, you know. That is the one thing. The second thing is missing here is some of the um, event for the business community, like uh, in Ho City, City, all we do with the Oktoberfest, Beer Fest, something like that. It's very simple, it's very easy, but if in the new uh, invest something like that or organize something like that, I'm for sure I'm not the only one expert who be in the new. Thank you. It's really impressive. You know, when we do our city, there, you just mentioned it's very important that if you work in a country that you have a local contact. I think, oh, yeah, it's a universal idea, so you need to have a local contact with a local platform. But I quite impressive the local like, support here from Bing Zhong is really useful. Yeah, very good example. So next I want to hear from John. John, you know, that for when you to review to uh, evaluate the intelligent community, you have different categories, and I trust the workforce and the innovation must be some of the items that you feel. So can you talk more about how you see Bing Zhong doing in these two topics? Yeah, uh, we are talking about working force and, uh, and innovation. So this 
these are the two major topics for the city to do the transformation. Also, when you are selecting the, or evaluating the intelligent community. So, from your point of view, because you also have to set a model for the main job. What do you think about they are doing in terms of the workforce and the innovation? Um, very important topics as part of uh, the intelligent community indicators. Um, we were just talking about workforce uh, in Mendon. If you are having uh, issues at all about developing uh, proper educational opportunities, the idea of bringing in uh, international schools uh, is, I think, a, an appropriate way. We have seen this, you know, I worked in, in the Shanghai area and brought in American and uh, Canadian schools uh, into those areas and what they do is they then create an international environment but also many of them stay and uh, participate, in, participate in most cases in the Shanghai environment. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the development of innovative uh, hubs and the idea of Ecosystems around that. It's a very important piece of uh, creating not only the ecosystem but a place in which the community can develop with the, with the kids, with the universities, uh, with the school systems. Uh, you know, an ethos around the future of work. And that, that is a very important part. One of the uh, uh, other things our friends from IPO brought, and that is looking at the whole truth of the Helix environment, bringing business into the discussion, bringing government into the discussion, but also bringing academia and citizen groups into it. Uh, I think as time goes on, we're going to need to see more and more of these kinds of mixed environments having a dialogue around how the future of work is going to uh, exist in the So I, I think that uh, you need all of those participants to work in a collaborative way uh, to bring out these new ideas and to engage in um, making those new environments happen. They don't happen overnight, they don't happen singularly, uh, they happen as a collaborative engagement Examples is what uh, my friends in Peter. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, I had the honor of uh, hosting your PM uh, visit last year to Eindhoven because he was inspired by the cooperation between Mignon and Eindhoven. And we showed him around at the uh, Brainboard Industries campus, which is uh, what we call the factory of the future. Because no longer in the future we will see large single companies building their factories, but there will be a trend that large companies will work together closely with many of their suppliers in the supply chain. And at present, in the world, you can see many changes in these supply chains. A lot of companies in China, in Taiwan, and other countries are reconsidering uh, whether they stay only in China or if they have to move their operations in what we call China plus one or Taiwan plus one strategies to uh, Vietnam, Thailand and other ASEAN countries. That will require a different type of facility we can provide. These companies want to move fast. They are not uh, all the, big, like, the biggest like Samsung, but they're especially medium-sized suppliers. They want to start fast and they want to find a place where they can sit together and work together in this type of supply chain. So this factory of the future is also based on the triple helix. The factory of the future in Eindhoven, you will find vocational college, local medium-sized tech suppliers, and all kind of expert centers around 3D printing and also 4G and Industry 4.0 expertise, so that medium-sized companies can also deploy advanced technologies that will keep them also competitive in the in the global challenge of the world becoming more innovative. So the triple helix is also transferring into. Business side, 
where business realizes that without proper education on hand or on site, it will be difficult to deploy the right people with the right skills for the needs they have. And I think that is also one of the concepts we are looking at in Minyu. So no longer looking at only these, these big companies building big factories and large plots of land, but also looking for solutions that we can maybe provide ready-to-run solutions with all the facilities that help them to make a quick start if they move from other countries. Okay. And so, so it's our, my pleasure to be here together with you to share some of our uh, experience and uh, our historic uh, journey. Um, as you know that Tico Vietnam, um, or Tico Group, we are the Swiss uh, leading company on the EMS industry, electronic manufacturing service. So we have uh, worldwide uh, 2,600 uh, employees and almost 50 locations 